can you learn a new song for a gig in just 15 minutes? Yes, you can. And in this video, you'll watch me chart and learn a song in real time in under 15 minutes. This powerful method will help you immediately in learning any pop song by ear that you might play on a gig without having to consult drum tabs or song tutorials on the internet. Not to mention you'll eliminate all the stress and the anxiety of having to learn songs last minute for a gig. I've been playing professionally for nine years now and I've been using this very method to quickly and confidently learn hundreds upon hundreds of songs for every gig that I play. Keep watching and I will teach you exactly how to do the same. This is a full on song learning workshop where we're going way in depth, but once you get through this, if you apply what you learned today, you're gonna have a repeatable, predictable method that's gonna allow you to learn any song you wanna learn, however quickly you want to learn it. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer, where we're all about learning the most important core drumming skills that help you really make music better and faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. In today's video, we're skimming through a very deep topic, and so we can only cover so much in this video, so I want you to go download the free PDF guide below that you'll find at the top of the description that goes way more in depth with everything we're talking about today, as well as shows you a lot of visual examples in 10 of my personal charts I've written, so you can see that and follow along with me. The guide is called Five Steps to Learning Any Song in Under an Hour, which is our goal, and ultimately we wanna whittle that down to 15 minutes. You might not be able to get 15 minutes on your first try, but you'll gradually get there the more you do this. We're breaking down learning any song into five steps, and really it's five listens. You know, we're gonna listen our first time, and we're gonna do X thing. And we're gonna do all this without consulting any drum tabs online, without having to watch any tutorials. We're gonna learn any song by ear. So I want you to have a song in mind, something that you want to do this with. And if you're following along in the, the guide, as a matter of fact, pause the video, pause the video right now and go get the guide because I want you to see the example charts that I write throughout the guide so you can see exactly what I'm talking about through each of these five steps. So I'll give you a second, pause the video, go download the guide, but as we go through each step, we're gonna add a new element to our chart. And so you can see me doing that throughout the guide. And I give you action steps at the end, telling you exactly how to implement this on your own and you're practicing. Here we go, let's get started. We're gonna breeze through this. First off, some important introductory tips. So if you're going to learn a song by ear, you've gotta set up a really good listening environment. And really the, the big thing to not do, don't listen in the car. Um, if you're learning a song for the first time, don't learn a song in the car. Set up a, a, an isolated environment where you can sit there, ideally with headphones or in-ears, put those in so you've closed off the world around you, and you can just immerse yourself in the recording. Because what we wanna do here is the first time we listen to a recording, we wanna be able to imagine that we're the drummer, we're listening to everything around us, we're picturing everything on a stage around us or in front of us. We're thinking about, hey, there's a guitar over here, there's a guitar here. Hey, the drums are panned this way where we hear the hi-hat on the left and the ride on the right, or the other way around. Are we facing the drummer or are we the drummer? Listen for those details and imagine that you're the drummer. Think about the dynamic that you're playing. Think about what's coming next in the song. What are you building towards? What are you heading towards? What kind of fill are you gonna play to get the band there? Just think about what's coming next. Imagine you're the drummer. And that's how you can immerse yourself into a recording, into a song, so that you're in this state of deep listening where you can actually retain a lot of what you hear. And that's the key to a really successful first listen of a new song when your goal is to learn it and memorize it. So if you've done that, you've really set yourself up for success. So really here in our first listen, we're also paying attention to song form. We just wanna know, okay, is there an intro? And then maybe a verse and then a chorus, another verse and a chorus, maybe a bridge, probably if it's a pop song back into a chorus where maybe there's a breakdown. Those are the things we're listening to. And this chapter in the guide, I call this song form prediction. What every song has in common, pretty much every pop song at least, there's really a couple of main song forms and you'll find this to be true with so many songs, especially pop songs. They're generally gonna follow an A, B, A, B, C, B format. If A is the verse, B is the chorus, C is the bridge, that's the format you have. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and then maybe something unique or different at the end, but then we're out. And the bridge is functioning as something new, something different to take us to a climactic point in the song, and then we're going back to where we started, sort of, with the chorus or maybe an outro, and then we're done. So A, B, A, B, C, B. Pay attention and listen for that form in a lot of songs, because you're gonna find something like that or a variation of that. Of course, there are other forms as well, and you might find A, B, A, B, A, B, where it's just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or verse, 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 
Um, those forms tend to happen more often in a traditional hymn or uh, maybe a soul or Motown song. I think Lovely Day by Bill Withers is a good example of a song that doesn't have a bridge. And a lot of the, um, the Al Green songs from that era don't either. And really you just have a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and it just repeats. That's the song. And there's a, usually a fade out at the end and there's nothing super shocking. It's just the same groove the whole way. And so that's often an A, B, A, B, or an A, 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 depending on how you think about it. So if you can go into your first listen of the song, knowing that most likely the form is going to be A, B, A, B, C, B, then you kind of already have your work cut out for you. You can expect that, okay, we probably have an intro at the top. You can write intro, probably going to be a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, so on. And so when you can predict the form like that, that kind of takes the stress out of the first step, which sets us up for a lot of success with our second listen. I call this length prediction, how to not have to count measures in a song. Because who wants to count? We don't want to have to count while we're playing a song. If we're, if we're playing drums, we want to make music. We want to listen to the vocal and we want to be in the moment. The last thing we want to do is be counting and thinking, okay, fill on the eighth bar, or fill on the twelfth bar, or whatever. We want to be in the moment enjoying the music. And so uh, here are some tips for how to not count. So most song sections are made up of four, eight, or 16 bar phrases, or maybe a 12 bar phrase if it's a 12 bar blues, uh, but most commonly in pop, four, eight, or 16. And the reason why is just because that feels natural. It feels complete. A four bar intro feels complete. A five bar intro would feel really weird. An eight bar verse feels very normal, just like a 16 bar one would, or a 16 bar chorus. Uh, a lot of times an eight bar bridge or even just a four bar bridge that feels very complete. It's very square. Most songs are very square and even like that where they're very predictable. And because that feels so natural, really you don't have to think so much about counting. You can just feel that, ah, it just feels like we've completed this section. We just finished the eighth bar. Or this instrumental, this little intro feels complete because we just finished the fourth bar. It's just one of those like laws of nature that four, eight, and 16 feel very even and complete. So if you can always know and feel and recognize four, eight, or 16, then anything other than that is gonna jump out at you. How do bankers know if you've handed them counterfeit currency at the bank? Well, they know that the currency is counterfeit because they've seen a ton of actual currency so that if anything is different, anything is weird, it's gonna jump out at them. They don't spend hours and hours studying all the fake currencies out there. They just study the real one. That way they know when something's up. And so if you do that and you study four, eight, 16, you get used to how that feels, then if a five bar phrase is in there or a seven bar chorus or like a 15 bar bridge where we're just out a measure early at the end, those things are gonna jump out at you and you're gonna notice, oh, we just hung on a little longer or, oh, we jumped out of that early. So you'll remember that. So on our second listen, you'll see this in the action step in the guide and you'll see my example of this written out. We're going to write in how many bars each section is and we're gonna make sure we're counting as we're writing this chart. But our goal when we're performing the song, when we're playing it is to not have to count. On our third, fourth and fifth listens here, we're gradually working toward that. So our third listen, this is an important one. And by the way, at this point, because we've got our roadmap, we've got our measure counts, that's 90% of the song. That's the song form. We know how long each section is. And so we can fake our way through the song at that point. That's a big deal. And that's, those are important elements to have. But the next thing is, what if we wanna transcribe some groove? We wanna write the groove there on the chart or write the fill on the chart. Well, I call this next part, what we're gonna do on our third listen, the shorthand notation hack. How to very quickly and simply learn grooves and fills by ear, get them onto your chart so that you can learn them, memorize them, and not have to think so much about them. If you are unfamiliar with music notation at all, definitely get the guide. <laughs> Go download that now, I know I can't say that enough. But the visual aspect of this is so important. You've got to get the guide. You've got to be looking at this. But I included in there a quick crash course on reading musical notation, which is really very simple, especially as it pertains to drums. And really, if we're notating a groove, if I'm writing out a groove on my chart, really all that I need to think about is the kick and the snare pattern. I don't need to write in all the timekeeping notes. And so that's the big hack. That's my big time-saving method. If the groove that I'm playing goes like this, I'm not gonna waste my time writing in 16 sixteenths for the hi-hat, that's gonna take forever. Writing all those X's, beaming them all together. No, I'm just gonna write the kick in the snare pattern. Boom, ga, boom, 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 ga. I'm just gonna write that in and then write a little hi-hat sixteenths, uh, probably with a plus sign for close, draw an arrow across the top. That's it, that saves so much time when you can just write in the kick in the snare pattern because it's very important to know the kick pattern of a song. 
and have that written in there along with your backbeat or whatever else is happening. And the timekeeping is generally the less important part when we're talking rock grooves, pop, you know, pop songs that have rock parts. We don't need to know as much intricacy when it comes to ride and hi-hat. Another important thing, when I ride out these grooves, I will use a slash to create the note head rather than a full oval. The last thing I wanna do is feel like I'm taking the SAT and like filling in a, a bubble, filling in an oval, and then getting all OCD about it because I went outside the line trying to get it smooth. Don't do that, that's gonna take you forever and it's gonna look really sloppy when you're done. Whether or not sloppiness bothers you, it's gonna take you forever. And so instead of writing a full oval, just write a little slash and then write your stems. That's perfectly fine. That's a great shorthand way to write out the stuff fast. Because again, this needs to be fast. If we're gonna whittle this down to 15 minutes, we can't waste time on little details like making sure our notes look right. And now for our fourth listen, I call this section here that we're doing in our fourth step and our fourth listen, the cheat sheet. How to read a chart without having to read a chart on a gig. I know that sounds confusing and doesn't make sense, but our goal is to have this chart written out that's there for us to glance at but we don't have to read it. We just wanna be able to glance at it and see what we need to see and not have to count and just see the reminders that we need to have as we're playing the song so that we can play it flawlessly. So in this step of our charting, we're just adding any elements that we think we might forget. Like if there's a break on the last measure of the chorus, we're gonna write in stop measure eight. Measure eight, we're stopping. That way we know that that's happening. Or if there's a, a key fill, like in the air tonight, I know that none of us really need to notate that fill because we know how it goes. But that's an important part of that song. We wanna make sure we don't miss the big in the air tonight fill. So that's something we might add in our chart if we, were, if we didn't know the song and we were learning it for the first time. And so this could be any break, stop, build, uh, dynamic change, anything important and crucial to the overall groove and arrangement of the song. Just write a quick note in there. You can notate it, write words, whatever helps you remember that it's there because you don't wanna miss that. And then you can highlight it on top of that. And then the other part of this is color code things. What I like to do is color code the roadmap column in my chart. Again, you can see this in the guide. I have a different, I have these markers and I have a different color to represent each timekeeping element of the kit. And so if I'm playing a tom groove, that's blue. If I'm playing a ride groove, green, closed hats, yellow, open hats, orange, crash, red. And so that kind of covers the main types of timekeeping. And if I'm Keeping time on like the rims, or maybe there isn't really a obvious timekeeping, I'll usually do blue. And so that kind of serves as the toms slash other. And if you think that's weird, well, listen to my logic. Our goal is to be able to glance at the chart and to know all the crucial information without having to read. And sure, we can write in there, okay, ride groove. We can write in there closed hats, open hats. But if we have a color in our mind we associate with that, right, the color, that means you glance at it and just in a quick glance, you know exactly what you're doing. The way we're formatting our cheat sheet is we're putting the most important information on the left, gradually working into more details on the right. We read from left to right, so we might as well structure our chart that way. Where on the left side, we have the most crucial elements, the roadmap, the number of measures, and our timekeeping. We can fake our way through a groove or a fill if we need to. We wanna have those details there, but in case we're just in panic mode, all we have to do is just follow the arrangement and know that, okay, I'm playing open hats here, ride here, it's okay if we don't nail it exactly. Ideally, we want to, so we have that information there also, but we wanna be able to gather as much as we can just at a quick glance. Now for our fifth listen, we're gonna listen with the goal of memorizing. And this is also how we can whittle this down to 15 minutes. So I call this section the 15 minute method, how to stop counting and learn a song in just two to three listens. That's how we can get it from an hour down to 15 minutes or even less. And we wanna be able to ditch the chart and memorize the song. So how do we do that? Well, we learn the melody. Know the melody of the song. Be able to sing it in your head. Listen to it on repeat once you've charted it, at, you know, leading up to the gig so that you can sing that song back in your head. You hear it playing in your head because knowing the melody, that's more powerful than counting. If you're having to count, you're doing math. You don't wanna be doing math while you're playing drums. You wanna be making music. And if you can hear the melody, you can just follow that in your mind and you're not having to think about how much longer is the chorus. No, you're just listening to the vocal and you're following it. And that's perfectly fine to do that in drumming. You don't have to count. We drummers don't need to think about counting and oh, keeping time, keeping time. We need to make music, we need to follow the melody and in doing that, keep good time and create a great feel. But our goal is to interact with the melody and the better you know the melody, the more easily you can memorize the song, feel confident playing it and just play more musical parts in general. So here's how to condense this whole charting process from five steps into just three or maybe even just two. Be familiar enough with song form going into it that you're able to write your roadmap 
and count measures on that first listen. So the first time you listen to the song, you're writing in, okay, intro, verse, you're writing in how long each of those sections are. So you're counting, you're making clear notes of that so that after the first listen, you have your roadmap and you have how long each section is. That's 90% of the song and you can probably do that in five minutes. Number two, get confident and comfortable and quick at transcribing grooves and fills. Yes, this takes practice and you gotta do it a bunch. You gotta challenge yourself to do this over and over again. That's what I've done and the more you do it, the more comfortable you get writing out grooves, writing out fills and when you can do that quickly, you can actually do all of that on your first listen also. You can hear, hey, we've got this four on the floor groove, write that real quick. Hey, it changes to this halftime thing in the bridge, write that out real quick while you're counting. When you get good at this, when you've done it a bunch of times, it's really no big deal and you can condense a lot of things into that first listen. And then you can use your second listen to notate any of those key elements you don't wanna forget, like, okay, we've got this breakdown here, we've got this weird rhythm hit here. You can double check that you wrote in the fills and the, the grooves right. So those are good things to do on the second listen. Then you can use your third listen to just listen to the song, just enjoy it and really get that melody in your head. And so it's almost like that's just our bonus luxury listen because we got the chart done in the first two listens. So potentially we've learned the song in 10 minutes or even eight minutes. And then we're just using that third listen to absorb it, really get it going in our head and just pay attention to that melody. One additional tip, set a timer for 15 minutes while you chart and just having that deadline will actually help you a lot in condensing it. And of course, in the guide, go download it. In the guide, you'll find a lot of additional tips, exercises, action steps, and tons of examples, just visual stuff of all of this, so it'll make a lot more sense. You can also see 10 of my personal charts that I've written. I tried to pull up a few from every main genre, so you can see exactly what I've been talking about. Having that in front of you will really help all of this come together. So now this video lesson would not be complete without an example of me writing a chart in real time. That's the one thing I couldn't put into the e-guide and that was a good reason to make this video so I can show you exactly how I go about doing this. So now we're gonna jump over to a segment of me charting a song in real time. This is a song by my band and the reason I picked this song was because I partially own the rights to it which means I can put it on YouTube and YouTube is not gonna pull it off and I'm not gonna run into copyright issues. So. Technically, this is a song that I already know that I played drums on the recording and I've played it a bunch of times, but I've never written a chart for it. So this will be my first time writing a chart and you'll see me go through this exact process. Um, I'm gonna try to be as methodical and detailed as I can, but also as quick as I can. So I hope you enjoy, hope this makes sense. Here we go. changing my own notes I've been changing my own notes to settle down to be settled down cause she smokes from the hip like a radiator set her hands are still dry from saving
Cause she smokes from the hip like a radiator Said her hands are still dry from sailing the salt lakes She's got tattoos on her fingers She's got tattoos and only she knows, she knows, she knows Changing my own notes. I've been down this road before. I've been down this road before to settle down you best settle down I've been changing my own notes Before I've been down this road before to settle down, you best settle down. I've been changing my own notes, I've been changing my own notes. Settle down, you better settle down Cause she smokes from the hip like a radiator Said her hands are still dry from sailing the salt bay She's got tattoos on her
Mother, she smokes from her hip like a radiator. Said her hands are still dry from sailing the salt lakes. She's got tattoos on her fingers. She's got tattoos, and only she knows. From hip like a radiator. Said her hands are still dry from sailing the salt lakes. She's got tattoos on her fingers. She's got tattoos, and only she knows, she knows, she knows. Okay, so at this point we've pretty much got all the essential information for this song down, so I just want to go through any uh, other thoughts that I have on this particular chart and this particular song. So yeah, it was definitely a little weird maybe uh, me charting a song that I already knew because I kind of knew what was coming up next and I knew it roadmap wise, but I realized, you know, I haven't thought about how I would notate these grooves, and so like up here, at the beginning, when I started writing that one in, I realized, oh wait, it's a it's a two bar groove because I'm hitting the snare on four, right here on the second measure rather than the and a four that first time, 
And so I had to make sure I wrote that correctly because if I were writing this chart for somebody else, that would be important. I would want to make sure that I remembered that. And I'd also never thought about exactly what beats and where these hits are that happen in each verse. And so I could go through, if I were learning this song for the first time, I very well might write out this section, like this nine bar section. And if I were to do that, I would do something like dividing this up. I'd have like all my, my measures written out here. Actually, I'd probably write them smaller than that even. And so there's what, eight measures, and then there's the ninth right there. So that's the ninth measure. And so we could go in and say, okay, we're playing time for first measure, second measure, and mostly for the third, but right here we have the big hit on beat two. And so we'd wanna make sure we remember that. And then we could even go in and, and number our measures too if we wanted to be thorough. Of course, this looks super sloppy, but this is, I'm just doing it real quick. This is what I would probably do. Oh, I meant to write that the measure before. So really that extra note is right here, that band hit basically. And then it's uh, just a normal, normal time right here. And the same thing happens going forward from there. So if you wanted to notate that in detail, I do that a lot of times on certain songs where if there's a particular rhythm that I wanna make sure I don't forget, I'll go through and literally write it out so that visually I can see everything. But in this case, I definitely got lazy here. And so I'm just telling myself, okay, those hits are measure three, measure seven, and measure 10. Now this is something that it wouldn't hurt to go back and double check. And so I'm gonna double check it and make sure that I'm actually, that I've written down the right thing here. Okay, here we go. I've been down this Two, three, four, three. Yep, so that's measure three right there. Five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two. So that's measure seven. Nine, two, three, four, ten, two. I've been changing my own notes. So hopefully that makes sense. So that'd be something I would go back and definitely double check. And then you could add as much detail here in this section as you like to. There's sort of a rhythm that's happening right here. And it's the uh, one and two and three and four, one and four. And so we could even write out that rhythm if we wanted to as a reminder that, hey, we're playing that type of rhythm there. It'd be like a dotted quarter like that. One, two, and three and four, and one, two, and three and four. So we could add in that kind of detail if we wanted to there. And then like right here when the kick comes in, we're just playing on downbeats and gradually growing it. And so we could specify that and put in as much detail as we want to. But a lot of times in sections like this in songs, I'll kind of just feel it. I'll remember what's on there. And if nothing on the recording really jumped out at me, then I'll just think to myself, okay, I roughly know what's going on there. That's probably what I would play anyways. And of course right now, this is what I would play anyway since I played this. But in a lot of songs, things are very straightforward. And, and if there's not something bizarre and crazy, you probably don't need to write it out because whatever you play is going to be the generic build kind of part that you need. And also, because I'm always trying to save time, right here, intro groove, because the intro groove from up here comes back. And so there's no need to write that out again. Chorus groove, bridge groove in the jam, intro groove there. So again, keeping things simple, we don't wanna write out grooves more than we have to. So basically there's only three main groove parts that happen throughout this song. And it's this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. And that's a great thing to be able to see on a chart uh, when, when it comes time to go practice the song. When you've got things written out like this, you can see, okay, here's part number one that I'm gonna work on. Here's part number two I'm gonna work on, part number three. And so on, that way you have it visually laid out, you know exactly what you need to focus on. And of course, if you wanted to go into detail and add in fills, you could. There's a big fill um, that we put in in the middle of the jam here, just to really escalate that, that horn part going on. And so you could add in, okay, big fill, measure eight if you wanted to. And then maybe I would uh, try to notate that fill or write it out. Uh, but of course, in this case, it's one of those default fills that I could just naturally play and it felt natural there in the moment. Uh, but if it were a weird one, if there was something just really weird about that big fill, I definitely would want to notate it just so I'm make sure I'm make sure just so I'm making sure that I'm playing it right. Because if it is a big important fill, you probably want to play it right. But either way here, it's basically, let me go find that section again. here in the next measure. Yep, 
it's somewhat of a two measure fill, sort of a measure and a half, I guess you could say. So it really doesn't matter what fill you play there as long as it's that length where it kind of just fits there. And so I could write in like measure and a half fill or fill that starts near the end of measure seven in that phrase. And that's really the, the key information I would need to know. But for the most part, there aren't any key important rhythmic band hit fills in this song that I feel like I need to write out. So that's why I didn't. Really the most important things are the hits in the verses right there and right there. Uh, as well as just the specific parts. And the, the groove in the bridge is pretty important too, as well as following that horn melody. And that's something I like to do a lot in my playing. I like to emphasize melodies. And when there's a big horn melody going on, why not emphasize that? Why not draw more attention to the part the horns are playing? And so that's the whole goal of this pattern, this groove right here, and the additional hits that I throw in. It's, uh, it's not drawing attention to the drum groove, it's emphasizing the horn part and drawing more attention to the horns and making that feel bigger and more powerful. And so that's the whole point of that, and that all leads up to the fill there, uh, and so on, so you get the idea. So I think that pretty much covers everything here. I'm gonna just do a little bit of cleanup and get rid of the stuff here that I don't need. Uh, also, don't forget to add in your song title. I pulled up my metronome app just to clock the tempo because I <laughs> couldn't remember exactly what tempo we recorded this at. It's 132, so I always like to include tempo and even time signature up here. We could write in 44, quarter note equals 132, settle down, and then I'll put in the artist name. That way, if I then scan the chart, or maybe I have done it here on the iPad, I want to make sure I've got the title on here just so there's no confusion later. But that's about it. We're all done.